This building was a hotel long before it was a pool hall. There is some evidence that A.B. Thistlewaite had something to do with this building. When I was a kid. That big rock building that fell. It fell right in. at the top of that, there was a block that said A.W. Thistlewaite on it. Well, at now the time that, it fell, it that could there. have been, that could have been the Thistlewaite property. must have moved over there later. But yeah. Art Thistlewaite. Have you ever seen that, John? Oh, it was. Art was a was a uh, watchmaker, jeweler, in the little building that was a saloon for many years across from Tom Lamming's office. The known owners of the pool are, are from 1924 to 1929, the owner was George DeLude. The Tonganoxie Mirror reported on November 13, 1924, that George De DeLude was the new owner of the Davis Pool Hall. From 29 to 31, the owner was Noah DeLude. During this time, it was referred to as Noah's Ark. Noah had come to work for his brother, George. George died, and Noah married his brother's widow and operated the business until he sold it to Arthur Whitney. Al Hicks came to town around 1937 and bought the business in 1938 from Arthur Whitney. Al and his wife ran the business until 1950 when Al died. Mrs. Hicks operated the pool until it collapsed in the summer of 1957. Al was a full-blooded Indian who'd played football at Kansas University. While there, he was an All-American guard. The men standing in this photo are Henry Hawkins, George DeLude, and Charlie Castile. When the pool hall collapsed, Mrs. Hicks was in the second floor. She fell all the way to the basement. The incident took place while some men were in the basement making repairs. The official statement says that the building collapsed. Damon Freeman would argue this point because when it happened, he was sitting at the counter of his wife's cafe and was blown 10 feet away from the counter. Explosion is the other suggested cause. Three people died and eight were wounded. Albert Conley's barbership, shop, the dry cleaning place, plus Opal's cafe were totally destroyed. Some concerned about other buildings were being involved, but none were. The jury trial determined the pool hall caved in after the foundation gave way. George Peters owned the building when it collapsed. Charles Farrell was wounded fatally and his mother was awarded $10,000. And there was an A.P. Laughlin real estate office was next to the door. Right, to right down here and there. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little uh, two-car, or a little bitty garage between there and Salmon's. Yeah. What the? And when the, when the building caved in, Salmon's ran out there and tore that garage down so it would keep Domino Oh, yeah, too. yeah. Dr. Parker went down into the basement and administered emergency care to those who were injured. Local anesthesia was used to relieve the pain. None of the buildings were ever replaced. Opal moved to another location and finally settled on the south side of the 600 block of 4th Street. For a short time, she was in the West End Cafe area just across the street east from the Methodist Church. In the location where these three buildings existed, another building was built and it became the, the new post office.